Hello, I'm Sue Romanoff from Edison Group. Today, I'm joined by Rob Barrow, CEO of MyMed. Let's jump into a few questions here, Rob. Perhaps there's some stigmatism over the use of psychedelic treatments. Maybe share your thoughts on the overall market sentiment and how it continues to evolve. What are the critical steps needed for psychedelics to achieve commercial success? And maybe more specifically, how does MindMed intend to address this? Yeah, thanks so much, Sue. So I think it's re really important anytime we talk about the development of, of the psychedelic drug class or really any novel drug class, uh, it's important to highlight why we're doing this. And, and in our case, it's because there's a, a massive unmet medical need due to a uh, a severe and growing mental health epidemic, both here in the United States and, and really around the world. Um, the resurgence of research on this drug class has been driven by that massive gap in, in available therapies and the preliminary evidence for this drug class of, of psychedelics has demonstrated a really a remarkable response and, and generally well being well tolerated in these preliminary studies as well. So uh, in the, the context of a, a severe need, we have a drug class that is effectively sat on the shelf for, for many decades, but has been re-looked at in, in, in the context of, of medicine and trying to, to, to ultimately treat mental health disorders. We're just seeing re remarkable responses, which gets us very excited. We've seen providers, patients, regulatory authorities also get uh, incredibly excited and engaged around the potential of this drug class. And that's what we're here to, to develop. That's great. I mean, since you have such a busy development pipeline, Maybe you could summarize some of your clinical priorities and maybe bucket them into uh, near, medium, and long term. Absolutely. So our development pipeline, one of the things that's been very uh, critical to MyMed's early development was a, a broad collaboration where we have exclusive rights to the data from historical and ongoing studies with Dr. Matthias Leakti at University Hospital Basel in Switzerland. He's been doing research on this drug class for, for the better part of, of a decade. And, and we've been able to access those data and uh, ultimately inform our development programs based on those investigator-initiated clinical trials and some other additional preclinical characterization. Uh, but our core focus is really on our two lead, lead candidates, uh, MM120, which is LSD D-tartrate, and MM402, which is the R enantiomer of, of MDMA. For MM120, we have a phase 2B study in generalized anxiety disorder that we'll read out in the second half of this year. In addition, we have a phase 2A proof of concept study of MM120 and a low repeat administration model, uh, which we'll read out additionally in, at the end of this year, uh, in the, the second half of 2023. And so our development priorities have been focused on those two molecules. MM402, we're going to be initiating a phase one clinical trial uh, and, and ultimately going to be pursuing an indication of an autism spectrum disorder. So. One of the, the, the breadth of our pipeline is also informed by those early investigator-initiated studies, and that gives us insight into, into where we might take the pipeline into the future. But you know, our, our core focus is on these two lead assets and, and the indications of, of GAD, ADHD, and autism. Yeah, I mean, those are uh, really um, areas of unmet need. So I, I think patient access and scalability will be a priority. Maybe you could provide some details on the clinical care model covering the treatment life cycle and maybe how you're planning to implement those. Absolutely. So one of the, the critical elements, something that's really core to our DNA and how we've approached this uh, dynamic, which is, is very unique. And, it, and certainly we think of other yeah. areas of medicine like surgery where patients come in and they have an acute intervention and a, a very long act a long period of, of benefit from that, that's not what we're used to in psychiatry. It's not what we're used to in, in many mental health disorders. And so it is a paradigm shift. That's what's so exciting about it, but it also has its unique challenges. And uh, our view from day one has been that we have to, to ultimately uh, aim to have these therapies accessible to the patients who need them, but also to leverage the, the current infrastructure that exists today. While it's uh, not adequate to, to have the kind of benefit, and that's why there is such an, an unmet need, uh, there is a, a, a massive mental health care infrastructure. And what we want to do is develop therapies that can fit into that uh, infrastructure that can leverage the, the currently available standards of care and ultimately be an additional tool in the toolbox of, of clinicians to hopefully drive patient benefits. So uh, our goal and our, our aim and our development pathway from day one has been uh, with access and scalability in mind. That means things like 
taking a very rigorous approach at assessing the drug effect as a standalone effect. We certainly have patient psychosocial support and, and want to ensure both in our cl clinical trials and ultimately one day uh, in a commercial setting, that there absolutely needs to be an infrastructure of support and patient care and education. Uh, but in the scale of, of the kind of involvement and, and discussions around the involvement and criticality of psychotherapy, uh, we're taking the drug development approach to, to demonstrate that the drug has an effect on its own, we certainly anticipate that it will be that outcomes will be improved and that uh, like with many other pharmacotherapies and mental health disorders, that drugs plus psychotherapy or drugs plus psychosocial support will have additive effects in, in the real world. But our goal and our, our aim from day one has been to demonstrate that strong clinical activity of the drug so that it can, can be uh, scaled and accessed by all, even those who, who may be not as inclined to engage in, a, in an extensive psychotherapy regimen. Yeah, that makes sense. So, what are what are the regulatory considerations? Are there are there nuances yeah. in, con in conducting clinical trials with scheduled psychedelic drugs? Maybe are there challenges to access of treatment? Certainly, one of the the challenges, and and this is more of an administrative. Uh, hurdle that we've gotten you know, have have a lot of expertise and experience in navigating is just additional involvement by the, the drug enforcement agency here in the U.S. and other uh, you know, equivalent regulatory bodies around the world. From a, a regulatory FDA standpoint, from a drug development standpoint, you know, it's really like developing any other new chemical entity or any, any other new drug. I mean, any drug that's in clinical research has to go through the same. Uh, FDA process has to go through the same ethical approvals, generally regardless of, of jurisdiction. Um, and, and really, that is how we develop these molecules. We do have to get Schedule One controlled substance research licenses, and, and it adds a little bit of complexity, but it's something that our team is, has a, a great level of expertise in and has been able to navigate very efficiently. Okay, well, thank you, Rob, for spending the time to help me better understand your company, and thank you all for joining in. If you'd like to learn more about MyMed, please refer to edisongroup.com. 